Hi everybody, this is Bob, the old ham, been on the air since uh, 1958. And I get these ideas, and sometimes the simplest little idea is just, uh, I just think about it and I, th I, I think, wow, such a simple little thing, why didn't I think of that years and years ago? And uh, how nice it works. I have a uh, Simpson uh, Series 8 multimeter that uses recessed socket type connectors. And uh, I got it right here. And it uses these recessed socket connectors. Like that. That's actually a socket in there. And the pin is down in here. And uh, would you believe I broke one of those? And I wanted to, uh, I wanted to replace it. And, uh, well, get on the internet and I find out uh, to get a replacement set. It was uh, like $35. And besides, I had already purchased a couple sets of these, which are the fluke type probes. That's got like a banana plug down inside there. And so I got to thinking about it. And I thought, wow, if I had a little brass or copper sleeve, I could slide over that that would fit tightly and make good contact and then I could rig it up to make it uh, springy on the other end so that it would spring. So uh, what I did, I cut two pieces of one and a quarter inch long copper water tubing. This was left over from when we had the uh, ice maker put in the refrigerator, or I put it in, but it's, uh, it's just copper tubing from the hardware store. I cleaned the ends out, took the burrs out on the inside of these using an X-Acto knife and uh, got that cleaned out. Then I found out that it was a bit too large on this side which would go into these fluke type probes which have the recessed pin down in there. So I squeezed it with a pair of pliers right up here and got a nice snug fit and I thought well that'll work uh, the the uh, sockets down in there the pins down in there ha have got little spring things on the sides they're like banana pins and so they grip inside really nice and make good contact and it fits firmly so then I put this in my little vise and I cut it with a hacksaw to a depth of one half of an inch and then I squeezed it just a little bit with pliers and found that it would fit just nicely into the uh, Simpson meter recessed socket with a pin in it on the Series 8 multimeter. So then, after discovering this, see these will go down in here like this nicely. They fit firmly like that and once you put them on set the camera down there for just a second I like I say once you put them on like that you can see the slot I cut in there and I just squeezed that with the pliers and then you can slide it right down in like that and as you can see right in here it goes down in about a quarter of an inch with the insulation and they fit firmly down in there so those are going to work fine and I can use these leads test leads that I already had I had two sets of them and uh, I didn't want to spend thirty five dollars for another set and wait for them to come in the mail and all that when I had these on hand. And you can see how nice they work. No problem. I think I'm going to put a little bit of heat shrink right on this part, part right here so that it fits a little snug, a little tighter right up near the top. 
but they work just fine like that. I just wanted to show you how nice that worked out and sometimes it's these little simple things that you think of that make things so nice and easy and work out great. Be extra extra careful guys because uh, when you're working with uh, high voltage electricity and I consider high voltage electricity to be anything above 50 volts you want to be careful because you can get a shock or worse or be injured so be very careful and uh, you can see how these go in a little farther about a quarter of an inch down into that meter so that everything is plastic up here so that uh, you couldn't get a shock if you happen to touch that with your fingers so I thought that was a neat thing and I thought I would share it with you and I like to do things like that on these cold winter days it's 21 degrees outside right now and we've got about six inches of snow on the ground so it's a nice day to come down here and work with electronic things, experiment, uh, turn on the ham radio. I really like ham radio for this cold weather, especially for us older folks. And some of you guys who are not in ham radio, you might look into it. Check with your local radio club. Don't be shy. You'll find the guys are very, very friendly and more than willing to help you, uh, help you along the way. And you'll find out that getting a license couldn't be easier uh, these days. You no longer have to learn the Morse code. Uh, it's just so much easier. In fact, they have classes at many of the clubs where you can get a license in one day. And uh, you won't have the highest class of license. You'll have to work your way up to that. But you can start out with a technician license and a class that you attend for one day and get your license. And I think that's a great thing to do. I think you'll find a wonderful group of people that are very friendly, helpful, and uh, I have made friends that I've had for life. With that, I'll say 73s and good DX.